Hi, this is Jay calling for Ed. Hold on. Thank you. Ed, this is Jay from Pit Buff. I'm sorry, from who? Pit Buff, the coal mining website. Pit Buff, P I T T B U F F. Uh, yeah, yeah. Holsing, yes. Holsing, yeah, how are you doing, Jay? Good, good. Uh, I got your email. I was, you know, sitting on it, was going to respond, and then I sat down here, had a minute. I said, I'm just going to call him. No kidding. Uh, it's uh, it was it's probably about I don't know. It's, it's a building sixteen by sixteen or something, but it's right at the entrance to the coal mine, which is open. You can see back in the mine. Wow. You know, like hundreds of bo- like hundreds of bottles and stuff that will come out of the entrance of the mine. There's still some in there, but this mine actually ties into Ivo, ties into Black Diamond, ties into Catsburg. They're all tied together right here. Um, yeah. And I'm curious, um, the, those in the family line, uh, we, we call it, we say evil, it doesn't matter. I'm curious why you have an E on the end of it, on the website. On the end of Eiffel? Yeah. Because that, some of it is spelled like that, some of it is spelling a town is spelled like that, some of it is not. Um, I, I think it's just the way the paper spelled it, or, uh, Spelling, I think, on, on part of locals. Basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was just curious because uh, you know it's a family name. I'm descended from the, the from the Evils, and uh, I had never seen an E on it. But things change over time. Yeah, I've done uh, my my family tree is uh, the 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 Ivo line is huge in Monongahela. Um, after they moved over from Greenwich um, in the late eighteen hundreds, and that's pretty much where they still are. Yeah, and, uh, wow. And then they moved. They had the mine up right up the street from me here, which was Victory Hill. There's a mine right under there that uh, it changed name to Hutchison Hayes, but that was part of Jones's. And then Jones ended up. There was a big connection with the Heron family. The Herons came out of Pittsburgh. They were one of the founding families of Pittsburgh, and uh, they came and started the lumber business, cutting trees down made a bunch of money in that and then they started getting into the coal mining and banking business and uh, they come up here to Monongahela and they were really good friends with the Joneses and he actually they gave them a bunch of money to start the mining business because they were they recognized hard workers and they were willing to put the bill up and Joneses had a lot of property through here they had this Catsburg mine all the they have brickyard here they had uh Yeah, Consolidated bought them all up around 1899. Yeah, once they started uh, opening up the southern markets, everyone was cutting their throats here, so they, they consolidated in 1899 and consolidated. And that's when Browns took it over, and Jones has started going more into the railroad end of it. Yeah, they, they, actually, they actually signed a clause in the sale with Consolidated 
that they w weren't allowed to ship by river anymore. By rail. Um, well, that's when they switched to rail. Oh, that consolidated one and all the coal. And all the coal just strictly on the river. Yeah, yeah. They wanted all the barges, and they bought up everything along the river. And that's when Jones yeah, they, started uh, looking out towards Cannonsburg and Mariana and uh, um, right. uh, Burgettstown um, and uh, other areas. And they actually built right. rail tracks. Where Agnes, where Agnes and Rachel will mines are out that way. Yes, yes. That was their biggest uh, enterprise. Uh, it's in a historic district now. Really? See, no one in this area even knew anything about this coal mining. It, it, there's so much history here, and it's just forgotten about. And until I started opening this up and put it up. But uh, there's a lot of history up in these couple blocks here. There's still coal here. Uh, my house... My house is actually the madhouse that was built in 1860, and right next to my garage is straight up and down a hillside, but this, from the street, six to eight feet up, solid coal. I could go out and get coal out of the hillside still, but there's a huge coal dock right down the street here where they're still loading barges, and we're bringing coal in from all around, and they're still loading all the barges down here, so there's still mountains of coal right down the street here. So it's still a really big area for coal in the area here. No kidding. Yeah. Tell me about what you got inside this uh, this this sixteen by sixteen. Uh, um, I don't know museum. Yeah, my uh, I'll have to I'll have to send you some pictures of it. Uh, hey, I, I could do like a uh, maybe like a virtual tour or something. I can I can uh, set something up with you where I can actually show you. And back into the mine. Uh, this was actually sold as surface coal right here. Originally, it was out of the ground. And until 1840, they started digging drift mining, going straight back into the hillside. But uh, like uh, the hair, uh, the matter of fact, the guy that lives in the uh, William Ivel Jones house, he's supposed to come here this afternoon. He's an electrician. He's supposed to come here. I'm going to meet him with a little bit, but he actually lives in the Ivel. William Ivel Jones house down the street here, and it's the biggest house in Casper. Yeah, he uh, he was a, a dentist, or or the Ivels. Uh, there was a, a dentist there, but I do know that they started naming their kids with Ivel and Jones, and because the families right, were so all, tight. Right, and Herons too. They they added the Heron name into them too. They were all. Because those families were all really tight together, they were also with the Browns in Pittsburgh. Also, how do you um, how do you spell Heron? H e r r o n. There's some stuff on my website about the Heron. Uh, uh, Heron. Uh, Heron's actually owned the first bank in Monongahela. They set up the banking business 1850, and they had the banks downtown. But they actually had the Monongahela. National Trust Bank, the first bank in Monongahela, where they were printing their money and stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, some years back, when I first started doing my research online, I friended, uh, not like Facebook friended, but made uh, friends uh, through email with a J.P. Heron from Cannonsburg who sent me uh, all, yeah. all sorts of stuff. He's passed away now. Um, oh, but I did not realize that his line was involved um, with the banking and with the money and with the the coal. Yeah, they're the one that basically, they basically financed everything. They they recognized the hard workers in the area and they were willing to put up the money and and they actually became part of the businesses too. They were they they actually ran like the uh, financial section of the of the businesses and they put family members into the businesses. Interesting, yeah. Well, Jones... Now, like, um, matter of fact, the, the uh, William Ivel house that the guys come up here today, that was actually, uh, when William Ivel died, he sold that house to Matthew Heron. And Matt Heron uh, lived in that house after uh, William Ivel Jones. No kidding. The, um... Yeah. I know Jones was a hard worker. I, I've read some things about 
where he would sleep on the barges um, in, oh, yeah. in bad weather to make sure they wouldn't sink, and he would bail them all night long um, oh, yeah. before shipping them out. Um, he was not a millionaire to begin with. It took him many years. Um, right, right. They, they actually had a small house up here on Victory Hill. They were just ordinary, ordinary townsmen, but he made his fortune in the coal business here. Yeah, he was involved in the town politics, too. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, they all were, yep. Seems like all, all of them were also involved in the, in the politics. That one hair on, matter of fact, he got out of the banking business, and he, he became the mayor of Pittsburgh, and his, his son took the banking business over, which really helped these guys out here. But, yeah, they're all intertied, and they were all, a lot of politicians drew them, between Browns, Joneses, Aarons, and... Yeah, yeah. Wow. How old are you, Ed, can I ask? Pardon me? Can I ask how old you are? I'm 56. Okay, I'm 59. We're the same uh, same generation. I, I kind of I kind of grew up with the history. My dad, my dad actually has an archaeology, uh, a doctorate in archaeology. So I was kind of growing up with it, but I really had no history in it until I moved here and I found out there was mine in my backyard I, the, the <laughs> started sinking and there was, it collapsed eight feet straight down and I'm like oh great is my house the collapse of the mine so I started doing all this research and the more I did the more I found out it's like holy cow I, I put that website together and the city uh, the historical society called me up they're like holy cow can you come and give a speech on this no but kidding COVID hit, and COVID hit and everything from 70% so but in the meantime I built this whole building I set it up and I got a, I got a hell of a collection in here too. It's a lot of history. I do a virtual tour for you. Yeah, I've never been out that way. Um, I live in Massachusetts. Uh, uh -huh. Our family moved out here in '51 um, from New Jersey, but originally from Cannonsburg. Um, huh. And uh, you know, all my work has been through contacts and. Um, you know, the internet and, um, I buy old history books and, uh, you know, wherever I can get information, um, it's how I started that, that my website and I get emails, I get emails from all over the world, probably, probably 20 a year, um, people wanting, uh, to find information on their ancestors and, uh, you know, do I know anything about so and so who was killed at this mine? Or, and then I found a lot of cousins. People are like, my name is uh, Ivil. My name is Holsing. My name is, um, you know, Jones. How are we related? And uh, yeah, wow. Huh. So it's been a, uh, it's been a, uh, you know, twenty years I've been at it online, and uh, before wow. that, um, I was using microfilm. Um, oh yeah, right. You know, back in the dark ages. <laughs> right. Yeah, I actually have a uh, wood plane from Catsburg mine. It's Catsburg on it. And, uh, really? Yeah. There's uh, there's yeah. I have a lot of stuff in this museum. I have geez, everything on here. I got kind of old maps and all that whole area. I got every kind of tool that they used and lighting stuff and. Um, yeah, there's just, there's just so much history right here in this area. It's, it's unbelievable, and it's just totally forgotten about. No one knew anything about it. Yeah, you know, it takes guys like you, well, and me, you, uh, you're you more hands-on, but to keep the history alive, I guess, um, is the way to put it. Yeah, I'm trying to get it back to where uh, everybody knows about this again, and uh, uh, uh Jeez, there, I mean, there's just so much history here. I was down the scrapyard. Uh, there's a, actually a scrapyard now where uh, I will farm was, uh, and there's still there's still remnants of the tipple on the banks there. The concrete remnants are still there from where the tipple was, and there's still a bunch of houses down Catsburg. You know, the old miners' houses from it. Um, the, the laundromat. It was actually Jones's laundromat also, and it's still there. It's not a laundromat anymore, but it was uh, uh, Jones's steam laundry. They actually built it right next to, it was actually attached to the tipple. I guess that's good business. The coal miners all needed uh, cleaners. So. 
Yeah, they, um, well, the Jones, they diversified in ways to help themselves. Um, you know, the, the brick plants and, uh, um, and I guess, you know, like this cleaners and, uh, you know, they, they, whatever they could do to grow, um, you know, they, right. they put a lot, they put a lot of money in the community and they had a lot of people working here. So yeah. Probably a couple hundred, a couple hundred in each mine. Um, and I was really studying, uh, nobody really knows where the name Casper came from. They all say, but, uh, originally back in, uh, To the name, yeah, they named all the mines after uh, women. After uh, kids and the family, yeah. Yeah, almost all the mines have female names, and uh, most of them were named by 1900. They were naming everything after Jones's grandchildren: um, Bertha, yeah. Francis, Agnes, Rachel, uh, yeah. um, John Etta. The whole town of John Etta was named yeah. after. Yeah. Um, a granddaughter, and uh, you know, John Ed is gone now, but yep, yep, there's definitely a lot of history here, though. She's pretty neat, uh, uh, yeah, I've been working on this for a couple of years now, uh, about putting this collection together for years, and I'm like, finally got a chance. I'm like, well, you know what, I'm I got some downtime from work, I'm gonna turn this building into. Museum. Everyone thought I was crazy. What do you mean a museum? Now everyone's like, "Holy cow, this is so cool!" <laughs> I wish I lived nearby. I would. I would be there this afternoon. Yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get some pictures or some video or something. And get it forwarded over to you. I'll have to send it to the email that I sent you. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I could set up something where yeah, I could show you back in the mine and show you this building here. I'd just get pretty close to being ready where I can let people come and see it. I'm still not quite ready. Um, I got a set of steps going down into the entrance of the mine so you can shine a light back in there and look back into it. And... Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it, it, I stumbled on a, uh, um, that big plaque that's on the first page of my website when I was a kid, I was snooping in my grandmother's closet. I was yeah. I was probably twelve or thirteen or I don't know, maybe even yeah. younger. And uh you know, that was almost fifty years ago and uh Wow. You know, and it's you know, obviously my has grown uh quite a lot since then. But I um Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, the car was going by here. I'm out on the street here. Oh, okay. That dog is working. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, all these little towns in this area were all just little coal mine town. I think that's probably what established them all with the, uh, access to the coal. I'm probably only a couple hundred yards down from Idle Mine where the entrance came out. But there was 26 openings right on the street right off from here. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, the whole town was, was based on that. And, um, you know, you know, Western Pennsylvania, Virginia, uh, the whole area, you know, well, to this day, but, you know, that's what put them on the map was, uh, when they found the, uh, the scene was, you know, hundreds of miles long. Oh, yeah, stolen the whole, stolen the whole length of the river. Yeah, it's, it's actually exposed by the ground, like I was saying, right next to my garage. You can actually go out and still pull coal out of that group. Incredible. Yeah, because Jones yeah. came over before the Civil War, but he was a blacksmith. But a blacksmith is a good job to have if you're going to be in the coal business. Oh, yeah. Because you're going to need to manufacture things. You're going to need to build things. You're going to need, uh, uh, you're going to have to be equipped, um, you know, uh, I, I can't even imagine what it was like day to day. It was like, okay, we need to do this. We're going to have to make this. Um, my great-great-grandfather, Holsing, has uh, a patent on a, uh, in, uh, in, in the, a U.S. patent for some sort of steam pressure pump related to coal mining. And, uh, you know, these guys were inventors, too. Fire, uh, fires killed a lot of history in every aspect of any business over the years. Uh, historical buildings and all sorts of different things, and including the mines. Um, there, there, there was a big empty field when I first moved here down right at the beginning of town, right after the bridge, and I always wondered why it was empty for so long. But that was where the uh, Casper mine were they, they're called. Or their, or their uh, golf pallets, but that's where uh, the fire was burned in the underground. And I wonder if nothing ever really grew there for years. It's finally got some trees growing up in and out, but it was always just kind of a big gob area. <laughs> yeah, they actually diverted the, uh, the stream down into the mine when it caught fire in Gasberg. And a big ravine comes down the hill, they, they channeled the whole stream into it and cut it off. Oh, to put out the fire? Well, they let the fire burn, and they just cut it off, and, and they moved the entrance down a couple hundred yards down. The eyeballs, they both shared the same uh, pimple. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's... Yeah, um, it, burned, it, probably, it probably burned for 60 years at least. Uh. Yeah, I, I, I did a little research on there's a town out there where it's still burning. Um, oh, yeah, that's the Centralia. Central, yeah, I knew it began with a C. Yeah, and uh, they actually had to evacuate the whole town, and uh, it's just yeah, a, they, they they had the whole town move. Yeah, yeah, it's still burning. Wow. Yeah. The uh, the hill on the other side of my house over here it burned for probably sixty or seventy years too, where the Black Diamond mine was. Wow. They fought it from from probably nineteen thirties up to nineteen eighty when I moved in here. It was still burning. They called the old Smokey. Huh. And did you could you actually see smoke? Oh yeah, it smoke would come up out of the ground up on the hill top of the hill of smoke. Uh, everyone all the locals called it old Smokey. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, um yeah, I was also involved a couple of years ago uh in Mariana uh, a woman there contacted me to have a plaque put up. Uh, oh, one of the, the yeah, a state historical marker. Uh, I want to get out there yeah. and see that too. Um, but yeah, uh, rich, rich history out there of 
hardworking yeah, men. Big explosions. They had a couple of really big explosions. Rachel and Mariana. And, yep. and yeah, another thing I found using uh, the newspaper site was, uh, I guess Jones uh, fired somebody in Monongahela. Um, this is the late 1800s. And the guy showed up at his house with a gun. Really? Yeah. And, uh, Just, yeah, they didn't play around. No, no. This was, you know, this is sort of the Wild West type days, you know. Uh, the late 1800s. And uh, Jones, I guess, uh, kicked him right off his front porch and told him to get the F out of here. And, uh... I, I, I don't know how it was all resolved. It obviously went to court. Um, I can imagine with uh, uh, Jones and Ivel and all these people, must have had lawyers working fairly often. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they, they, had, they had a lot of lawyers back then. Yeah, they just as many lawsuits back then. I'd like to see the history of quite a few of them. It's uh, right, across, right across the, the river is um, the dividing line in between. Washington and Allegheny County. Mm -hmm. Allegheny County being on the other side of the river. And uh, when Monongahela was set up, the, the only police in the, in the whole area were in the, the Monongahela on the Washington side, so there was no law on the Allegheny side. Uh, so the town, they had a little town over there called Hell's Half Acre because Pittsburgh was the nearest police department. You know, that was way far away from. 20 miles to get here by horse so mm -hmm. it was basically it was basically a, like a free-for-all bunch of speakeasies and uh that's where a lot of murders and everyone went to get drunk all the time sundays and it was called hell's half acre right across the river from casper and Iowa. no kidding now was there a what was there a ferry to cross how did they cross they had they had a bridge actually the ferry the ferry was uh, Parkinson Abbas Valley, but in 1832 they built a wooden covered bridge. So they had a wooden bridge right over to it. And that bridge burnt down, and then they built another bridge, a steel bridge, but 18, 1830s they built a wooden covered bridge, though. So it was a, cause that's the, it was a, uh, the, the tar the national turnpike that went from Washington to Pittsburgh, uh, and that was. No kidding. Hey, here's a question for you, because you're a local out there. Um, yeah. um, I pronounced it years ago. I used to pronounce Greenock as Greenock, but now I'm finding out that the Scottish town is called Greenock. How do you pronounce that area? Grinnick, they do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Just curious, because that's where um, the first Holsing landed in 1840. And then Jones came a few years later, and then Ivel came, and then they all married each other. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see a lot of these people, a lot of the, inter, a lot of the neighbors around here are all intermarried. And I um, uh, was I just, just looking up some history this morning, and uh, I was... So, a couple of names of Joneses. Uh, yeah, there's the daughters. Everyone, you say, oh, it, it seems like they were all important business people that they all intermarried with. Well, they were all. Well, you can imagine it's not much different today. You're um, a, a wealthy father. You don't want your daughter to marry some schlub. Right. Yeah, and they knew each other. You know, they probably had yeah. picnics and barbecues. Uh, yeah. You know, the parents played cards together. They lived near each other. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, a lot of yeah. convenience. Yeah, I've got stories of them down there. Uh, they were, uh, someone called the magistrate on them because they were playing cards on the Sabbath and behind the coal mine down here. Really? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's not like there was a lot of uh, sports on TV or radio uh, 
Um, I've stumbled right. co- across quite a few stories. Um, playing cards and games like that were quite popular. Yeah, well, I, I know a lot of these houses along here that were the, the bosses' houses, the buyer bosses and the manager's houses, their houses are all built right on the coal seam itself where they had access to dig straight from the fireplace to the coal seam right to their fireplace. I think that's how mine is in the basement here in the room where the furnace is and you get to literally take it right out of the hillside put it right into your furnace. No kidding. All, all of the bosses along here, their houses are sitting right in the coal seam. So that was like, well, I guess that was one of their free options. They got free coal boys. And so you just send the kids out with a wheelbarrow. Yeah, well, they didn't even need a wheelbarrow. They were straight in the basement. Oh, really? Oh, th- right on it, you mean? Yes. Wow. Yeah, there are steep hillsides here, so the houses are kind of dug into the hillside. Uh-huh. And they're literally, the boss's houses are literally sitting on the coal seam. Like my house is sitting, the bottom of it's flush with it, but there's a room behind my garage that goes right into the coal. And there's like a little wire right behind the house. Boy, I tell you, if you ever get motivated, I'd love to see a couple of photos or if you know the these exact addresses of the Jones and Ivel and uh, houses. Um, you know, my great-grandparents... Yeah. We're married there. I don't know where they live, though. I have, I have uh, some information on all of them. I'll get you some photos and streets. There's a the street right down the beginning of town here is also called Jones Street, where uh, where uh, Catsburg is. There's a Jones Street right there. Yeah, I have uh, this gorgeous document from 1895 of when my great grandfather Holsing married Jones's daughter. And their right. their photos are on it, and it's called Mon City. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, they used to call it Monongahela City originally. It was called Monongahela City. They still, everyone still calls it Mon City. They do still call it that. Yep, there are all the locals still call it Mon City. Okay, yeah, I was curious about that. Yep, where you live in Mon City. And you, you, you grew up there? You were born there? Yeah. Okay. I moved down here when I was about 20. So I've been down here 35 years or so now. My One of my evil contacts, um, I, I believe she lives in Butler right now.